Hello, Dr. Ron England, and today we're going to talk about full text indexing. And I'm going to be doing this in SQL Server, and I actually have SQL Server up here so that you can, act, you can see what I'm doing. And uh, what I've done so far is, and I'm going to actually step you through step by step some of the things I did for the full text indexing. Uh, but what it is, I created a database, and I called this database Sample Full Text DB, uh, just for Sample Full Text Database. And I created this table here, uh, Create Table Text Table. I have a primary key identity called ID. I have a name, and I have I, I called the field where I'm going to keep the text text, and it's an Enverkare map. So it's a fairly relatively large field here. Really straightforward. Created the table. Now the first thing you have to do is is the database itself has to be um, enabled for full text indexing. So if you don't have it enabled for full text indexing, it's not going to be able to create full text indexes. So that's a simple store, uh, system store procedure that you can call sp underscore full text underscore database enable right here. So simply execute this, um, this stored procedure and you should now be enabled to do full text indexing except that there might be one little problem here. And I'm going to show you that over here. Um, full text indexing is not a default service that necessarily runs when you have SQL Server running. So you may have to go to your services, which I'm going to go right here, and you may have to scroll down through your services until you get to SQL Server. Now I'm running SQL Server Eaglin here, and I'm also running um, the full text search service right here is actually starting. Um, if it's not started, you need to start it. Now, if you try to start it and there's a possibility that it might not start um, and I had the same I had the issue in mind that I couldn't start this full text search because I it was having a dependency on a Windows 7 deprecated method. Um, to fix that, I went into regedit and I moved the dependency off of that specific full text search. I'm not going to go over how to do that. You can Google um, and find how to go into reg edit specifically and go to the file. Now I will show you this. If you go to the properties, the file itself that is the service is um, this file right here. Let's see, you can't see it, so I'm going to go ahead and pull it. Okay, msftesql.exe. msftesql.exe. So you could go into reg edit specifically search on msftesql.exe and find that specific dependency and if you do that then um, and it'll have a dependencies on other met, um, other services those dependencies don't need to be there um, there is no actual dependency necessary to run this service and so you simply remove them restart the machine and come back okay now once you've got that service running and you've got your SQL Server running, you can actually now create full text indexes. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to need to have a place to put these indexes and they need to go into a full text catalog. So I have created this full text catalog FT. As default, there are other options if you go into the documentation and look at how to create full text catalogs. Uh, you can see how to set certain specific things like where do you want to have it, what kind of file is it going to be in, because it is a separate file. Um, but right now I'm just going to use the standard default. Now I can create this full text index. Now is the next step. So I'm going to create the full text index on the field in the database that was the text field. So I create the full text index on this and I have to have a key index which needs to be a unique key in the table that you specifically have the, um, the full text index text from. Um, now, if you notice here, I've got the key index, and it's the name of the primary key, because when I created this table, I set up the primary key, and that is a valid key to, create, to, to have as your key index. Well, the thing is, how do you know it's called pk underscore index text table underscore 77884E7? Well, that's not that terribly difficult to do. If you come over here into the Object Explorer, and you look at your tables, and you look at this table, and you look at the indexes, Okay, there's that PK underscore text table. That's the primary key index, and that's the index you're going to actually create this full text index on. So what you're really saying is when you're searching, when you create this index, how do you know what field it goes to? How do you know what 
um, what row in the database table does it go to, you need to keep some specific index that says this is the row that it goes to, and it needs to be a unique index. Well, the primary key is a unique clustered index, and it makes it very simple to use that as your index on. So when I'm doing queries, I can always come back and say, well, when I did a full text query, I know it was, that full text was found in this specific row, and it looks through a huge text. All right. I've got my full text index created now for the next fun step here. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to insert some data into the table. Now, um, I just created a ton of data that I pulled off of a website. Um, do note that if you're doing this method of inserting into the database, uh, since the single quote is the delimiter for a string, that those um, text files that you're going to go ahead and put in here cannot contain single quotes. Now, I just did this a simple way to do this. I just removed the single quotes and replaced them with spaces because I'm just trying to do a quick sample. If you're doing parameterized queries from a web, from an interface or some other type of interface, you can have quotes in your final data. It's not an illegal character to actually have in the field, in that specific cell, but I didn't feel like messing with it, so I just removed them. Okay. There are ways to get them in there if I really didn't want to have them there. And I actually then inserted another huge Enveric error in here. See all that red um, is? And these are the contents of some messages I had on the bulletin board for one of my classes, where it's all that those messages are now in. So I did two inserts, and they're now in the uh, database. So if I were to come up here to the database, and I were to go select top 1,000 rows, I'm going to see here's the ID, here's a name, and here's the text, and that's a big text. If I wanted to show the, you know, if I wanted to do a select all, okay, well, actually, if I just wanted to select the contents of that, um, it's a lot, okay? So let's remove, me to move that out of the way. Now I can do some queries. Now I'm going to have some fun with this. So you've probably used the like operator before, but the, the, the um, like operator lets you do specific pattern matching in strings. One of the problems with the like operator is if you're going to use huge chunks of text, it's going to be slow. Okay, slow is bad. You want to be able to do this fast. But you've got a number of operators that you have available to you when you add full text indexing onto this. So let's look at some of these queries. So now I've added this new operator called contains. So I select the ID and the name from my text table where it contains, and this is a pretty simple one where text goodbye. Okay, well, that's actually in message two, and you can see down here I get back the ID and the name of message two. Okay, well, that's fine. I knew that by looking at it that the word goodbye was in that big mass of text in message two. Well, now look at this. I've got this suggestion, but at the end I actually put a capital. In fact, I'll put another capital here. Make that a capital S. Well, full text indexing is actually smart enough to know that we're specifically talking about words. Um, the pattern here for suggestion is not capital S with a second capital S with a capital N, but if I execute this, it will find the word suggestion because it is contained in that first big chunk of data that I inserted there. Okay, so I've got this ability to have a much more enhanced matching of the patterns. You also notice it's fast. Okay, well that's actually kind of good. Um, now, I can also do this next one with like operators. I can actually go you know, a little bit more because I can say I can run two specific individual queries. But now look at what I can do here. Where contains text, now in quotes, goodbye and road. Well, the and is an actual defined operator here. If I, if I do this, well, the words goodbye and road are actually in message two because I have the words goodbye yellow brick road in there. So I've got both of those in there. Another nice thing that you can put in there. Well, what other things can you do here? Well, now I can do things like, you know what? Let's look at this next one here called that's got a near operator in it. Okay. Now, in this case, the near operator, the way I've got it, actually has an error in here. And that's, that's because the, the real reason for that is because the near operator is in SQL Server 2012, and I'm running a query that I had in 2012, now in 2008. So guess what? That one's goodbye. But if you're using 2012, you've got that specific operator that's available to you. I'm going to do one more example here, which is a wildcard example. And a wildcard example, I actually put in, uh, I have the whole thing in single quotes, but in double quotes, I'm actually going to put the word good star. And actually, what I'll do is I'll put the word go star here. 
and I'll go ahead and execute that query. And you can see that the word go star, which is a pattern, just like you would actually be using DOS patterns, is in the word good, G-O-O-D, um, or actually in this case it's the word goodbye, and it matches in message too. So I've got this ability to put other things in there. So you can see if you're trying to do queries on large batches of text, having a full text index is an incredibly useful thing to have. So that was kind of the whole point of this video, but what I'm really trying to do is just show you it's not that tremendously difficult to get up and running with full text indexes and be able to use these to do very effective queries. So hopefully this has been a very useful video. I went through it very fast, but I think that's what you guys want to be able to do is get out there and use this in a real programming environment. Good programming and more to come.